When most people think of Vikings, they picture longships slicing through cold seas or warriors braving frozen battlefields. But, you know, few realize the true secret of their survival wasn't forged in combat. It was built into their homes. In the harsh, wind-scoured north of Scandinavia, where winter darkness lasts half the year and temperatures can kill within hours, the Vikings constructed dwellings so efficient they outperformed some modern insulation systems. These weren't crude huts or smoky fire pits. They were thermal masterpieces, engineered from earth, turf and timber to trap heat, regulate humidity and maintain breathable air long before anyone used the word insulation. This wasn't just survival. It was engineering born from necessity. And today, as more people look for off-grid, low-cost and sustainable building techniques, the old Norse longhouse might just hold the blueprint for future Arctic living. The Vikings didn't fight the cold, they built with it. The first lesson the Vikings learned in the far north was that you cannot fight the Arctic. You have to work with it. Instead of building tall, airy structures like the Romans or stone castles like the Normans, they turned to the land itself. Their homes were low, wide and often partially buried. By using the earth as a natural insulator, they stabilised indoor temperatures year-round. Archaeological excavations of Viking settlements in Iceland, Greenland and northern Norway have revealed turf-covered longhouses that maintained interior temperatures near 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit even when outside temperatures drop below minus 20 degrees Celsius, that's minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's without electricity, glass windows or modern heating systems. Their secret was thermal mass. Thick turf walls, sometimes over a metre deep, absorbed the warmth from the hearth during the day and slowly released it through the night. The combination of compacted soil, grass roots and timber frames created a living insulation system. The grass on the roof wasn't decoration. It was biology working as technology. The roots kept the turf bound together while trapped air pockets between soil layers acted as natural thermal barriers. This combination of earthen mass and organic insulation made Viking homes virtually immune to the temperature swings that plague modern houses. Instead of relying on constant fuel or airflow, they let physics do the work. A Viking longhouse was typically 50 to 75 feet long and about 20 feet wide, with a single room housing people, livestock and supplies. To modern minds, that might sound primitive, but it was deliberate. The body heat from animals, combined with the warmth of cooking fires, added to the thermal balance of the space. The roof's steep pitch and layered design allowed smoke to rise and slowly escape, while retaining radiant heat. Underneath the floor, layers of compacted earth, straw and moss acted as insulation pads. Some excavations show drainage trenches built just outside the walls to divert melting snow and rainwater, proof that these people weren't just stacking dirt. They were managing water, air and heat like professional engineers. Temperature wasn't the only concern. Humidity was critical too. A fire in an airtight room would quickly suffocate everyone. The Vikings solved this with microventilation, 
small openings in the roof ridge and side walls that allowed air exchange without major heat loss. The constant gentle airflow prevented condensation and mould while keeping oxygen levels safe. In essence, the Viking longhouse functioned as a self-regulating thermal system, a combination of radiant heat, thermal mass and controlled airflow. It required no fuel other than the daily fire and no maintenance beyond occasional roof patching. It was the perfect balance of simplicity and performance. It's not widely known, but during World War II, when German and Allied forces operated in the far north, military engineers studied traditional Scandinavian and Icelandic turf houses for inspiration. The challenge was the same. Keep troops warm with limited fuel and materials. The solution they observed in ancient Norse design influenced the creation of semi-buried arctic bunkers, temporary shelters insulated with soil and turf, using exactly the same principle as Viking homes. Reports from field engineers noted that turf-covered huts consumed half the fuel of standard wood cabins and retained heat three times longer. After the war, these lessons were incorporated into polar research stations and early Arctic exploration architecture. Yet, somehow, the Viking origins of these ideas faded from public memory. The efficiency of their design was not myth. It was measurable science. The combination of earth insulation, radiant heat control, and organic roofing remains honestly one of the most energy-efficient methods of passive heating ever devised. If you want to apply this ancient engineering in a modern or off-grid setting, well, you should start with the same core principles. Use thermal mass, airflow control, and organic insulation instead of synthetic materials. For example, if you're building a small cabin, partially burying the structure into a hillside immediately provides earth-based temperature regulation. The soil acts like a thermal battery, holding warmth in winter and coolness in summer. To add a turf roof, you begin by layering sod over waterproof sheeting and a sturdy timber frame. The roots and soil you see will provide natural insulation, and, well, if you maintain it properly, this system can actually last for decades. Inside, it's best to use radiant heat sources, like a masonry or rocket mass stove instead of, you know, forced air. Place your fire or heat source right in the centre so the structure's walls and floor can absorb and then redistribute the energy evenly throughout. If you build your foundation with compacted clay, straw or sand, you'll basically be replicating the slow-release warmth of those old Viking floors. It's a tried-and-true method, really. Ventilation must be managed carefully. Small, high vents allow warm air and smoke to escape gradually, while low-intake vents bring in fresh air without major temperature loss. The same principle applies to greenhouses, root cellars, and even modern earthbag homes. These are the direct descendants of Viking building science, still quietly working centuries later. The beauty of this system lies in its honesty. It wasn't about comfort for comfort's sake, it was about enduring the North. You know, the Vikings didn't waste energy trying to heat the air. Instead, they heated the house itself. Every element of their architecture, 
from the earth-packed walls to the sod roof, was part of a self-sustaining energy loop. Today we rely on synthetic insulation, mechanical ventilation and constant energy input. Yet honestly, few of our homes could survive an Arctic winter without external support. The Vikings, using nothing but soil timber and ingenuity, built homes that did. Their designs weren't just relics of the past, they were lessons in sustainability long before the word existed. So, the next time you think about insulation or energy efficiency, just remember that the true masters of passive heating lived over a thousand years ago, under skies that barely saw the sun. They didn't just survive, they thrived, because they built with wisdom, not excess. If you found this exploration of Viking architecture and survival science valuable, do subscribe to In the Beginning, share it with a fellow history enthusiast, and keep uncovering the technologies our ancestors perfected long before modern tools existed. The past still has the best answers for the future.